Okay, I'm just walking you through the exploring stuff out of the code spaces so that you've got an idea what it's like. So from the GitHub UI, you can create a code space. It's a virtual machine, basically, that you can interact with through the UI. You can plug in your desktop uh, IDE as well. Um, I'm just using the UI, finding that's actually working pretty well for me. So what's happening now? I'm creating a new code space on the main branch of this repo, which is my website. Uh, I've set up a special a container with some special dependencies that I need for uh, image optimization, which I use to resize and uh, change image formats to make them more web friendly. So the standard container, standard container doesn't have this stuff installed out of the box. So I'm installing a few dependencies, which is why it takes a little bit longer each time. The, uh, each time you create a new code space, then it will go through the setup process. Um, the container image it's using is Python 3.11, but it's a Microsoft provided container that is set up for use with code spaces. So things like user permissions and things are, uh, are set up already for me. So yeah, here we go. That's I, I, I ran double speed for a few moments there just to save a bit of time, but it doesn't take too long. Uh, as you see, when you come back into a code space, it's already been running, gets a lot quicker as well. So this is a dev container JSON file. I have to add this. Um, it points to the uh, Docker file that I mentioned. So this is what was running a few moments ago. Uh, you can see the Microsoft container image there. And I'm installing those couple of dependencies over the top to help me optimize my images. So that's, what, that's the extent of the Docker file. Um, I've then got this customization block here, uh, encode.ops material insiders. Um, is a private repository. So this uh, this little block here gives read permission for this code space to access my fork of that repository. So that's how um, I'm getting dealing with the permissions challenge that I, that I had there straight away when I'm trying to use this with MKDOCS material insiders. There are other options, things, things like uh, secrets, keys, that kind of thing, um, which I've used with another repository that needs to access Google Cloud. Um, and that was the extent of the changes that I really needed to make to get this working. Um, what you're seeing happening at the moment, this is my setup, just basically installing uh, my virtual env and the dependencies that I need from a Python perspective to use mkdocs, which again, when I install, when I open a new project in uh, VS Code locally, or when I open a project I've had open before, it will go through updating the dependencies um, in this way. The one I'm just highlighting now is, uh, using that uh, that permission to actually access mkdocs material insiders um, during this build so that the dependency just gets satisfied automatically so that's quite nice the way that ended up working it took, a, it took me a little bit of time to work out how to do it um, and when you do set up a code space on a repo for the first time you'll have to go through a permissions dialogue to grant that permission um, it doesn't just happen automatically but once it's set up it's set up um, yeah, so where are we now? So let's say dependencies, uh, the Python dependencies are nearly finished installing, so we'll be able to do some. I'll create a new post in a moment, just show you how that works. So uh, I'm going to use a script that I've got to just create. Uh, well, first I'm going to activate my virtual env, and then I'm going to run uh, that new post script just to create me a new post that I can use to illustrate a really basic workflow. So this is this is just with the basis of the blog post that goes with this video. So that's created me a new post, which I'll open, make a small edit to. So you see it's nice and responsive. I've had no problems with the, the performance kind of in the browser. It's working really nicely and it, um, the only, challenge I've seen that I'm not sure how to work around for the best is uh, copy paste. I seem to use copy paste quite a lot um, in the browser, um, in the IDE, sorry. Um, and I have to grant permission at the moment to the code space, basically to the disk domain, uh, to be able to see the clipboard generally, which I'd rather not do. I'd rather, if I can, grant permission on a case by case basis, like ask me each time. Not always able to solve that problem yet, but uh, Aside from that, everything else is working great. Um, so yes, yeah, so I've, I've basically switched it to, to a different branch, code spaces, uh, committed these changes that I've made to that uh, code spaces branch, and now I'm just running mkdocs serve, 
I'll just show you how the port forwarding works. Again, like very straightforward. I was really impressed how easy this, this part was. And there, so that's my doc site. That's my website running um, on the workspace. And I'm basically accessing that as if it was running on the local machine on port 8000. Uh, so next, I'll just push that to back to GitHub, uh, create a merge request. And that's my that's my workflow. I'll then come back, edit the post, actually create the content. Use a, the merge request process to check that. Sorry, pull request process. It's been too long in GitLab lately. Um, use pull request process to kind of preview the changes and make sure they do actually work um, when run through the Netlify build that I've got attached to this. But that's a basic workflow. It's very similar to working on my local machine except that all these dependencies that you just saw getting installed, they aren't on my local machine. They can't see my local files. They can only see what I give the permission to. Um, you see that glowing space waffle is my uh, this code space. I just shut it down so you can see what it looks like when you go back into a show, code space that's been shut down. These shut down automatically after, after a good amount of time. But there you go, starting up again is an awful lot quicker than the initial sort of build of the code space from scratch. So this should be up in a moment. It's certainly quick enough that it's just it's just not an issue in my workflow. It's um, you know that I most I spend very little time creating like opening projects. Um, once the project is open, I'll be spending a little bit of time, probably only a couple of hours within that project.